Although growth was a little bit better in the third quarter of this year in France than people expected, nonetheless the economy is basically stagnating. How worried are you? Reasonably worried, I would say. I mean, we need more growth, for sure. What we need is to create a momentum to trigger trust for corporates and households in our country, to restore trust with our partners in the Eurozone and in the EU, and to trigger investments on the member state side when they, are, when they can afford such investments, and at the European and the Euro Eurozone side. I mean, you've talked about the need to increase competition in certain industries, you've talked about the need to reduce red tape. Can you do this without a major conflict with the unions? I do believe we can do it, because French people share the conviction that we have to reform the country. And even if we had some demonstrations, I would say, it's not a showstopper. But this is the sort of language we heard from the previous president, Monsieur Sarkozy, and most people would say he achieved very little in terms of reforming the economy. Why should people believe that it will be different this time? What we are building is precising a big reform program to open up a series of services and increase competition in terms of products and good markets, transportation and so on, and to open it and flexibilise the labour market. So I think it's, it's new. Now you're making some tough cuts here. Could Germany be doing more to help you in this difficult phase? They are aiming to balance their budget next year. Is that a mistake on their part? You know, we are making cuts and reforms for ourselves first and not for everybody else. And Germany has to implement the policy which is good for Germany first and not to help us. That's the point. But we have to increase the coordination of our policies. But can the Eurozone actually survive unless there is more coordination? No, we need more coordination. That's the point. Unemployment across the Eurozone remains dangerously high. How can you get growth up and persuade European people that the Eurozone isn't simply damaging to their prosperity? That's a fair point. That's why we have to accelerate reform, to invest more and to increase integration at the Eurozone level. Because we are sacrificing a whole generation in a lot of countries. Because it's not acceptable to have a lot of countries with sometimes 30, 40, 50 percent of young people without employment. Spectacularly dangerous, isn't it, in the sense that if you look back at the last parliamentary elections for the European Parliament, a third of European people voted for parties who were opposed to the European Union. Unless you get growth up, the whole European project could fracture. OK, but growth will not come spontaneously. So what we have to do in order to have growth is a political project, a political willingness to reform, to invest, to create a new dynamic. So growth is not a spontaneous movement, except if uh, suddenly you discover oil or I don't know what. And I can tell you, if you define a project, if you define a common willingness to go further, to progress for your economy and your people, growth will come back. Now there is a sort of related point here. France has been critical of the industrial scale tax avoidance measures that were introduced in Luxembourg. Do you think Monsieur Juncker's position is sustainable in the European Union, having introduced all those tax avoidance measures as Prime Minister of Luxembourg? I don't think that he was in charge directly of this tax ruling and especially the lack of transparency of this tax ruling. We need strong politicians at the European level and Mr Juncker is and should stay a political and a strong political leader. Emmanuel Macron, many thanks. Thanks very much.